let's start recording here. So this is the 18th of 2018, January. Um, so in discussing this question, what you guys pretty much all came up with was, well, they're just immune. So what would immunity mean? If you are immune to something, your immune system, it means that your body has seen it before, yes, but it also means your immune system's fighting it. I'm not sure that that's an accurate description of what's happening here. If they were fighting it, would you expect them to have their bloodstreams full of it? No, I don't think so. Because generally, if we say somebody is immune to something, it means that their body is tagging it and destroying it, tagging it and destroying it, tagging it and destroying it. I don't think we're seeing that with the white-footed mice and this bacteria. Now, here's the other thing. Like I said, they're also carrying a bunch of viruses. There's hantavirus, um, which I mentioned. That's one that will kill you out west predominantly, though it has been found in Pennsylvania a few times. Um, the mice pass that particular little virus on in their urine. What did we say about mice? They pee everywhere. Yeah, nice. Yeah, very nice. Hunt the virus. If you can smell mouse pee, you should put a mask on because um, hunt the virus will kill you. Um, you breathe in the aerosolized urine particles that carry the virus, and it's a respiratory infection. Nasty stuff. Very nasty stuff. Anyway, um, I'm not sure that what we're seeing is really an immune response, so that is a fantastic place to start. So what are other possible explanations? Let me, let me tell you a few things. What do you think, let me ask you this. At your table, come to agreement, what do you think is the lifespan of a white-footed mouse? Okay, you're welcome. Um, so what's interesting is if you keep them in a lab and you make sure that no foxes or coyotes or weasels or snakes or hawks or owls or anything else eats them, they can live over two years. That's still a pretty short lifespan. Um, out in the wild, biologists assume that if you are studying a particular area and you're looking at the white-footed mice, they assume that within one year, every single mouse there will be dead and replaced. That they have a lifespan of less than a year in the wild. Because um, like I said, everything wants to eat them. <laughs> Life is really hard. But they're really good at that whole making babies thing. What is it? Live... Live fast, die young, leave a pretty corpse. That's pretty much white-footed mice. It's a horrible, horrible, horrible expression. Um, but I've heard it tossed about. White-footed mice kind of do that. They live fast, they reproduce often, and they die. Did I mention that I was going to ask you questions that I didn't know the answers to? Yeah, uh, yeah. Guess what? Not sure. Um, I'm not sure anybody else is sure. But the, what, I have, what I have seen, because I've been reading up on this um, in my spare time instead of grading things, because um, reading articles is more fun than grading things, one of, one of the hypotheses that I've seen repeatedly is they have such a short lifespan that before they feel the effects of any of the stuff that they're carrying in their bloodstream, they're dead anyway. So that a, a white-footed mouse in the lab who you had infected with all the same path pathogens that a wild mouse is infected with might be pretty sick by the time they reach two, two and a half. I mean, two and a half is like an elderly little mouse with a cane and white hair and a walker. That's an ancient, ancient mouse. It's quite possible that if they live their full lifespan, they might be pretty sick by the end of it, but most of them don't live long enough for these things to affect them, is one line of thinking. Now, there may also be things in their immune system that are managing this load. Um, we talk about, I mean, think about a wheelbarrow with bricks in it. That's a load, right? You're carrying that. You're exerting effort to carry it. We also talk about in people with diseases like bacterial load or viral load. Um, it's a term you see a lot. If you know anybody who is living with chronic HIV, they talk about viral load a lot. And it means how much virus is in your bloodstream. So if you have a bacterial infection, we talk about how much bacteria is in your bloodstream, your bacterial load, how much bacteria you're carrying. Um, I don't know if a white-footed mouse in the lab would, you know, I, I don't know if there's some way that their immune system manages that bacterial load. 
and keeps it from affecting them? I'm not sure anybody knows. But I want you asking bigger questions because that's where you get the good stuff. Okay, with that, we're actually going to stop here. Tomorrow, here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Lyme disease. And I'm going to assign one bit of reading. I'm going to post, I'm going to link it right now. It is the CDC brochure on what you should know about Lyme disease. Okay? So this is the kind of thing you find at the doctor's office or you find at the state park when you go in to get the trails map and they say, hey, here's some information about Lyme disease. You can start reading it now or not, but um, it's just some background for you. And 